Okay, this is a, uh, an interesting chapter. I already muted it. Yes, I'm doing it again. Uh, it will be quite helpful uh, for customizing your app with graphics of some of different kinds, even if you make a plot or if you add uh, an image. So the few learning objectives that I've selected are how to use the render plot function, uh, create interactive plots, and displaying images with render image function. But there's more inside. We, we will see a, a bit more. OK. Um, so interactivity uh, is a uh, very important part of a shiny app. So we, we need the app for, for uh, interactivity. Um, so basically, um, for uh, what we are uh, going to do, uh, as I said, is um, uh, adding a plot or making a shiny app with a plot, so with a vis uh, data visualization, and then have the possibility for interact with it. Um, I uh, stick to the chapter, so there may be other um, ways to, uh, to add an interactive plot to your app, but for now we see what the chapter uh, tells us. And um, for example, the first uh, function that we're talking about is the plot output function uh, in the UI, while in the server is the render plot function. So these are the two functions that are the, the key elements for doing, uh, for adding a, a visualization in our shiny app. Uh, so, in su um, to summarize the uh, different types of uh, interactions, uh, we, in, in our app we can do clicks or double clicks, or we can hover or brush. So these are the, the action that we can um, add to our app. Uh, for example, if the, the, there is this uh, nice app, which is a, a nice starting point, uh, and uh, it, this is an example uh, on how to add a click, a clicking uh, in, in interactive action with your app. While, uh, while uh, you are looking at your visualization, then you can click uh, and see. It's like, like the adding a portly uh, uh, visualization. So we see in this example that there are two options available, a plot click and near points function. So the first option allows you to select specific points from the data. And the other one, near points, uh, select an area around selected points. So it releases values which are near your subject one. Because uh, uh, um, initially I thought uh, uh, that, that they should uh, uh, be the same. Instead, these near points, uh, function it um, goes uh, around the main point so it selects a very it, it, it just as, as the same as that the function is selecting a very small area around the wanted point so let's see how this uh, this simple, very simple app is made. I don't know if it's better to see the output first, maybe, and then uh, uh, go through the, um, through the, the code. Um, maybe that, that's the best way, isn't it? So we do this. Yes, that's okay. Yeah, I think it, this is the best way. So, if I go to my R, 
I have some code that I taken from the book. So I copy and paste the code. At the bottom of the uh, the code, there is there is this uh, shiny hub. Let's imagine that you know nothing about it. Okay, so you can you should save this uh, R script as an app dot R, and then put it in in a folder. Okay, so in a way that you can see this run app at the uh, top bar of your app. So if I run the app, I can uh, see my, uh, my app. So this is uh, an app because it is interactive. So if I click here, I selected a point and at the bottom of the uh, of the visualization, there's some information about uh, the points. As you can see here, things changes, and these are the coordinates of the selected point with a click. Okay, so this is very the the first uh, the initial uh, uh, things uh, in in the chapter. And uh, if we go through the, uh, the code, we can see that we use uh, in the UI. This is just a fluid page. It's not a complicated app uh, and everything. So you are working on your visualization. You want to see how to make it interactive, for example. With a click or double click, you can brush and whatever. Um, I think I've had some other things. Okay. If I do this, also the app, select uh, an area, okay? And the content, the, inf the information of this area is being um, put in this table at the bottom of the app. So all the, the points that have been selected are here. So we are talking about this MT cars data set. Um, I didn't uh, spend too much uh, words about it because I'm uh, concentrating on the structure of the app. So, um, but if you want to know a bit more, this is the MT cars data set. Uh, there's some uh, uh, vectors uh, about uh, feature of the a car, uh, uh, different information, the weight, uh, so the, the gears, um, the, the cylinders, the displacements, many things. So in the app, uh, I, uh, th there, is, there are two options. So you can click as I did the first time, or you can brush. A brush means selecting the area. Okay, you brush it and select an area, and then automatically it forms a rectangle uh, with selected points. So then in the fluid uh, page in the UI, we have this uh, verbatim uh, text output where are the info, and these are the coordinates for the points. So when I go here and I click on one point, this is the bit I'm talking about. So here I can see what are the coordinates of the point and it is done by this function, this verbatim time text output info. We can even see what uh, the, this function in particular does. I'm, uh, I'm sure this, this is, uh, we can see it later. Then uh, there is a first addition is the table output. And, and this is uh, uh, for data. And this um, is, will be in call after the brush uh, input has been made. So this is the fluid page, uh, the UI. 
in the first page for just for that visualization, nothing else. Then we look at the server. So the server is it is slightly bit more uh, articulated. In the server we have an output plot, an output info, and an output data. Okay, so this time we have two. Um, we have two output data because um, I've added this um, little uh, more information. And um, so if one works, the other, if one works, the other doesn't work and, and doesn't work and vice versa. So in the server, uh, the, the output and plot uh, the first bit here uh, uses the function render plot and is immaterially is the part where we, where we render the plot within the shine. So this is, you can specify the resolution of the plot and then this is the function. In this case, uh, uh, we have used the plot function for making the plot, but we can even use ggplot too. So we have used a weight and MPG, so miles per gallons, and we have uh, for, for making this plot. Then, as you can see in the UI, this verbatim text output info will be called in the server uh, here with the output info. So anything you call from the UI will be recalled in, in the server. So they need to be linked. So if you have an info here, you have an info in the server. If you have an info in the UI, you have an info in the server. So you have an output info. And what do you want from this uh, uh, info? What, what, what should the info do? Should be the imprinted. So that they need, it, it does need to appear in your app. So there is this function, render print. Uh, inside this function, there, there is some uh, uh, guidelines that suggest you to use the rec function because the rec functions show you that nothing happened before you click. It's like framing the, the situation uh, and in, in within more complicated apps, you see maybe later on in other chapters that this rec function is very important for when when you use lots of the activities. Um, you see in escaping the graph and everything that when you use uh, lots of reactivity, lots of buttons and everything, so the app can go uh, flip. Uh, so it can go in tilt, okay? So direct function helps framing the app until you make the input. And then there are these two elements, X and Y, which are the elements that you want to be displayed. So you want um, a table with informations, and then you concatenate the information in a way that you have. There's main, absolutely there's other ways to make uh, tables and everything, but this is one straightforward I say, uh, because you go and call plot click, which is here in the UI for the X variable and then you the you call the plot click for the y variable uh, which are specified here in the server so uh, it's interesting to me understanding this those things about the shiny app so basically you have a ui which is the user interface and it's the part when i am the user i'm making interaction to the app while the server is the engine, 
So it's inside, you don't see it, you don't make any interaction in the server when, when the app is ready, but it's the very engine of the app. So anything that you are um, activating in the UI need to be called in, in the called in the server. Uh, the, 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 so Alan said that we uh, have called the plot, called the, uh, the info for, uh, Oh, that, that's not the table, that, that was the, just the coordinate. So that's why, uh, so we call the X and Y, the, the two coordinates for the points, okay? So the table is here, the hit underneath, the render table, and we use the, again, the plot click to call the, 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 the table. for the elements within uh, uh, near points uh, or when you brush it within this uh, uh, the area that you have used the brush so you can do only you can do two options near points or brushed points okay if i if i do just near points uh, uh, appear just a little bit of, of, of the, the table, just the, the, the information around the point that I have selected. So this is the first, uh, the first app. Have you got any questions? Frederick, I was going to add, if you don't mind, the, so what, what you should really focus on from the server's perspective, well, first off, the UI. Um, you notice that the unique IDs that you're labeling each of these elements with, then when you're in the server function, the dollar sign is the unique uh, 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 combiner, I guess. So you're you're uh -huh. calling on the server output, and then you're 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 specifying the unique ID plot. So the output dollar sign plot, and then you're doing something with that. In this case, the first entry line twelve, you're showing rendering plot. So you're, you're telling the shiny app, I want to render this particular uh, graphical object. That's what gives you the, the, uh, the, the plot itself. The, the link, the link the, the, yep. between the, yeah. And then the second one where we have output info, notice that it's the second unique identifier. So on your UI, you have that, that is it verbatim text uh, or verbatim, verbatim text output? No, that's info. Uh, so you're calling on that particular named object, right? The, the JavaScript named object um, for output info, and then you're telling it to render print. So again, you're, you're calling on this render function to take that information and display it on the screen. Um, I, I'm only reinforcing the, the thought, Frederica, with the uh, combination between your UI side of calling on uh, objects versus the uh, output side of rendering. Yeah. I wanted to specify the, the relationship between the uh, named variable or named object in your UI versus the uh, call on that named object, a uh, unique identifier or a unique label. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, that what I was, uh, at, was, was I was trying to do is to have both, okay? So when I click once uh, to, to, uh, to have near points information, so a little table displayed, and when I brush it, the, the bigger table, so more, more information. But that, that is not the case. So I can, uh, I need to select one or the other, okay? So this way I have, the information from the uh, brush action and but not from the near point okay so that's what i wanted to show okay so let's go back uh, where we were so basically we already covered click 
brushes and brushing, which are the two uh, things mentioned. Then you can add a double click or the Hoover. Uh, here we have covered plot click, near points, and already the brush. But we see it's like a, a bit a bit more uh, about that. So as you have seen before, now we have just one action interaction, okay, just the brush. So this is very simple and, and, and it is what we have seen in the other app. So brushed points. So in this case, what you've got is just as the same as before, but you cannot click, you can just brush. So you can create the area and then you have the table rendered at the bottom of visualization. So now we want to uh, modify a bit our visualizations, yeah. Sorry, Frederick, I have a question. Um, um, please again clarify the difference between um, the brushed and um, I think the near points. No, the near point, I understand it's, it results a very, like a very out, output, yes. Uh, yes, the hover and the brush. Is there a difference between these two or it's just the same? Uh, the, no, the, this, this is about the click and this is a brush. So even uh, let's go uh, here because I didn't mention it, but if we go and see the book, uh, as you can see, click uh, as a near, um, for the near points as a function. Then there are other points events. So the hoover is a point event, while the brushing is a selecting point event. It's different. So the hoover, um, we can um, hoover options, double click. So Basically, um, it, it's a point event. So you can do the over on a point, while the brushing you can do on a set of points. Okay. Okay, yes, it's clear, thank you. Even if with brushing you can do near points or, or brush at points. But you know, you, you use brushed points and uh, you have this, uh, the, the difference basically uh, is that uh, here you have just the information for, for the points, for the, the X and Y. So the, the coordinates of the selected points while in brushing, you have an area. So more than one point. Okay, now we are going to modify the plot and say that uh, uh, we can use reactive val more than reactive. Okay, so both functions are being used with uh, um, uh, interacting with visualizations. Um, but more, more information, as I said, you will see in chapter 16, Escaping the Graph, uh, which mentions about uh, the reactive part of the graph, the, the app and all other things. Other information can be found in the uh, function factories uh, chapter of the advanced R. So, that's even a uh, very useful chapter for making, because at the end, Shani up, it's a, a series of functions. So you can easily modify when, when you have a function which is specified, you know that you can use a reactive function or reactive val, et cetera. 
inside you can or you cannot put some some things some other functions some other information that you want to be retrieved so i think this chapter is very important um to to have a bit of a, a wider idea about how, how you can make a function um and use it inside a shiny app so um, the the main difference between reactive and reactive val is this reactive makes reactive the block of the shiny app reactive val you specify a value for which the function will reactive at so for example if uh, i look at this app here which is loading. Okay, so this is uh, this is very nice. Eh? This is very nice. So I I have this uh, x and y uh, axis and some points. Okay, so if I click. Uh, if I choose a point and I click to a point, this transform the app into uh, sizing the points by distance by the point. So the the nearest point is it's smaller, while the farthest is bigger. So. Uh, size the points by the by the distance of the uh, selected point it's very interesting so how we can make it uh, let's imagine we have a data frame of 100 points distributed normally x and y what what do we do as a interactive action in our shiny app is making a click okay so in the ui we use plot output and click plot click because the thing that we do is just making a click okay so that's it for the ui why in the server we have this the reactive val okay the difference between reactive, where is it? Reactive function and reactive val is that the reactive val act on the value that you have selected, while the reactive act more generally, okay, on the app. So I use reactive val because I'm going to select a point, specify well specified point. So I reactive the value, and this will expand in my data frame. Okay, so I can click different values, but the one I click it is the one that is the key element. I call this dist because this value, which the app the app will react. Uh, in this case, uh, for me, that I'm making the app, is uh, relating with a distance. So the the, you can call it whatever you like, but, you know, it's um, as a sense, as a meaning to, to call it this, because we are talking about the distance. So what's happened after, so this is, is the reactive val. It reacts on a value and it expands on the on on the on the rest of the values. So then I have uh, this observe event on the plot click as before, as we called click plot click. In the observe event we have plot click. Plot output 
observed event. So the observed event uh, observe the event. So look at what's happened and uh, what is the input is the plot click that we name it in the UI. Then this is the function factories. So now what's happened here that this dist has become a function. Now we can use this dist as a function. So inside we want this to appear uh, act in near points. And let's see the near points function if we can uh, like find more information. So this near points function, what does? Finds rows of data selected on an interactive plot. This is brushed points and near points. So the difference is the input that you provide. If you provide a, a, a bigger input, an area or just a row. Okay, so I believe that they, I guess that they are almost the same. The difference is the area, which is, uh, um, so in this function, we use the data frame. Uh, if there's a brush, we need to specify the coordinates, so the area. Or in, in our case, we have the coordinate info. So if we go back here, and see uh, where was the, okay. This is the presentation, no? Now it's, it's in R. Uh, so we see that this, is the function factory. Okay, so we, we now have a function, which is this one here, inside as, as it is a function that react on a value of a data frame, on a row of a data frame. Uh, I use the near points. So near points, what are the requirements for near points? A DF, which is the same. And then the coordinate info. Okay. So all rows and add this to on this. This list is different. So in the book, this you do not make confusion with this and this. These are two different things. So this is the one I've made it. And this one here belongs to near points. In fact, if you go to the book and see, uh, that you can use uh, uh, you can be you can use uh, let's uh, scroll up to paragraph 713 
one three. And it's yeah, it's about three lines, three lines above paragraph okay, seven one three. Yeah, thanks. Go. Thanks very much. Okay, so uh, you can use this underscore or selected underscore. And we see now uh, another example with selected. So do not make confusion between the two. So this is this uh, is the, uh, belongs to near points. So near points needs this this underscore for uh, establishing the distances of the near points. Okay. Frederica, would it be yeah. would it be uh, stated that the dist underscore is a memory allocation or variable specific to the near points function? So it's only uh, applicable to the near points. It's only uh, accessible to the near points function. Yeah. So the the the, the di differentiation between the two is important. We could we could name dist anything we would want to. Inside the near points function, however, the dist is unique. Okay. It's it's specific to near points. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. Maybe if we were to change those words, maybe that would make it more explicit what the differences between the two would be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you you there's something in the chat. Uh, what is the reactive reactive? Are doing? Did, did you ask it before, or are you asking now? Sorry. I no, it's okay. To, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking Rich now. I've been trying, I read the book and I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but I am honestly still lost. I don't get what exactly these are reactive val. The, you are repeating, I think, one once, and then the number of times is the end row of the DF. So what exactly is this, let's say the line 144 doing in this case, in this particular, yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. So basically here, uh, okay, uh, uh, let's do two things. Uh, one is this. Uh, uh, okay, can you see here? So you, I cannot use it because uh, you can you can use it just inside the app. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, but uh, this is um, it's a reflex. A replication example for making you understand that the reactive val act on a specified value, while the reactive, it's more general. It doesn't get uh, specific on an input. Okay, on a on 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 a value. In our case, we have a row. Uh, sorry, I, I want to say something. Uh, so in our case. Uh, when we use this uh, inside the reactive value, this is not just a number, 20 as before, no? But uh, it's a series of numbers. Okay. And what are they? So I am repeating one to the number, to the length, or to the number of rows of DF, of my DF. So in a way that the reactive, yeah, yeah. I sorry, I, I think I get it now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, the reactive val act uh, uh, on uh, um, because this is the output. Okay, where is it? Okay, this is the output. I click on a point. Okay, this point is the one I selected. Okay, okay, now I'll change it because I went nearby. But if I select one point, this point became uh, smaller, the, least, the, the smallest one. And uh, the farthest from this starting point is the biggest one. So they are, they have this. Uh, uh, mm, so they, they are sized by distance. 
Okay, so going back to where we were, uh, when I click, I click on a specified point. So I use the reactive val. Then, uh, okay, so I use this uh, near points. So this is all belonging to near points function. And this is my disk, which uh, Ryan, can I, can, can do you, how would you say, how would you explain that? So basically inside the disk, the, the function that I've made, which is a reactive val on one, 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 one. Um, Correct. Okay. So I put one more function, which is near points. Mm -hmm. On distances, and so it, it changes the reactive value populated with the new indice of that of that near points. So the 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 call on click when you when you do your mouse click that uh, uh, creates that reactive call, which updates the values that you had previously put in there with your reactive values. Does that make sense? So. By 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 clicking that mouse point, you're sending back to the server or sending back into this function the values that you want to populate, and then re-render the output of that graphical object. It updates the reactive uh, with that new coordinate yeah. system of that, and that's why you get every time Frederica would click on the the graphical object, it it resets or or updates the reactive call to that graphical object, and so therefore the plot re-renders. The whole idea of reactive is kind of, a, uh, I'm, I'm opinionated here, but reactive is, is a very difficult concept to convey because it doesn't have any direct definition within the world of the web development, uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML, et cetera. But the idea of what you want to convey, or if we, we were to define a definition to what a reactive is, it's nothing more than I initially input something, I give some action, and then it updates again. That's the whole idea of a reactive. It's just an yeah. update between the UI and the server. Yeah. It resets. And, and we'll, we're in, in later chapters, we'll go very much in depth. The, the, I think it's chapters yeah. 14 through 17, maybe, uh, in this book, where it just goes completely off the deep end on the concepts of this reactive yeah. scenario. OK. So yeah, the, the, thank you. Just to conclude uh, and to um, okay, say see how to um, use a ggplot instead of a plot function. So now the, the so in the server, so the first part, it's a bit so we add this reaction thing. Okay, while before we just rendered the plot in the in, in, in the previous uh, app. Okay, so there was just render plot. While here, the, there is all this bit here for the reactive part, and then we render the plot. So the plot here, which is this. Okay, this is the plot. It's a normal plot uh, made in ggplot. So you have uh, data, coordinates, uh, sizes. As you can see, the size, it's by the distance. And the distance you have established it here. So you have added this uh, to the data set. This is a function factory. It's a nice thing. Uh, you find more on advanced R chapter. Um, and uh, so you basically add the vector of the distances uh, with your function, this one here. Sorry. 
So Frederica, just a, a quick yeah. comment in the relation between plot and ggplot. It's just the rendering engine or the rendering instruction that creates your plot. So in one example previously, we were using the plot uh, feature in this next code snippet. Now we're calling on ggplot instead. So really the, the essence between the two, there is no uh, visually the output is going to be the same, but how the server or how the, the computer executes the code is going to be different. We're just calling on two different uh, packages, two different uh, libraries. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, uh, sorry if I go <laughs> a bit forward. So then you, there is the resolution. Um, I don't know very much about that, but you know, let, just take it as it as is and uh, um let's go forward um finally okay basically we the 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 most of the chapter is done no okay so we did uh we see how to render a plot how to create interactive plot and now we see how to display and render an image which is the the last bit here we have uh, said almost everything. Uh, I've just, uh, um, uh, as I said before, that there was this, this part of near points or select before to go into there, which is here in another example. So select is whether it's near the click event so this is another example uh, maybe you can have a look at that um, i push the the notes you find in the in the chapter Le let's go uh, to to see what are the interactive limitations and then the image so basically what when you make a shiny app what do you do is what's happened is that the javascript captures the captures the mouse event then the shiny send the mouse event data back to r the reactive actions are recomputed and then there is the plot output that send an image of the result of the uh, to the browser so this is what happening in general okay so in terms of limitation, uh, here we talk about time and response. To achieve what is thought to be instantaneous, the action at click, such as the requested modification is immediately visible, it would be necessary to improve JavaScript computation. And this can be obtained with the plot repackage. Okay, but you can do it so that will take a few seconds more uh, then uh, here you can there is a way uh, which explain how to resize a plot so basically in the ui uh, this is the example of the app there is some chat okay uh it i was gonna say it should be noted to the group or to the the individuals watching the video in the future the uh examples that are posted uh on this hadley shiny app um feel welcome to go in and mess around with them and and change them modify them yeah uh, uh, do it at your own accord uh because it does really convey the importance of reactivity and the uh features the features okay. of this <clears throat> okay so um, this is the example um, um, it, so that you can the way that shows you the way you can resize a plot that you are using uh, you can do it for example with a slider input 
and this is the way it did it in the in the example there's um, there may be other ways so uh, the way you do it is using eight and weight as said in the book as functions okay so without specifying any level of the weight and the weight because you then you are going to use the slider or I don't know, a scroll down menu or other things. But you use eight and width as functions without specifying the values. Okay, so you have a width and eight, which are functions. And they, as they are function, they react and changes, adapt to different other when another value uh, they are variables you know the function are made of variables so a variable means that value changes it's not uh, a single value specified but it's a variable so values so you can use to do that you use width and weight in the server as a functions Okay, here there's a, a simple plot, not a, a ggplot. Okay, finally, to conclude, we have the images, how to uh, upload. And I have a question. Um, yeah. What will be the importance of having dynamic height and width? Is it like when you have a very complicated shiny app or has got a lot that you don't to adjust the width and height? Or what would be the importance of having um, a dynamic height and width, if you know? Right. I was thinking about it. You know, that, that is a great. This this is a great question. Okay. My answer is that you can use this to show uh, the differences how uh, visualization changes within changing its size, or you can use it when you have very complicated uh, or maybe slightly more complicated app with more than one plot. So, and they may be of different sizes by themselves. So you want to automatically resize the final output within them. Uh, or, uh, ah, yeah. I was going to add in uh, your different viewing devices that you were to witness this uh, dynamic environment in. So if you went from your cell phone to your tablet, to your Chromebook, to your laptop, yeah. to this massively sized, you know, 4K uh, video screen, the yeah. dynamic environment is going to uh, be able to populate or scale in size to the relation of that viewing device. So the, yeah. the concepts of HTML5 is very dynamic. Uh, uh, a good example to prove this uh, use case, Frederica, on your screen, if you were to change your yeah. browser window that you're you're displaying in currently, yeah. and you were to scale it up or down, your font would change, your, your uh, yeah. phrasing, your wording, your breakpoints would modify. The concepts of this dynamic environment or scaling of graphical objects is the ability of the screen to populate uh, in its in its most optimal form to display the graphic that you're witnessing instead of being static. So like if you were to see it on your cell phone, uh, maybe the, you know, some yeah. of the scale would be off the screen if you, if you didn't have this dynamic ability. Right. Hope that helps. Yes, thank you both. Yeah, that's, that's uh, exactly what, uh, what is. Okay, uh, so finally, we have this nice puppies <laughs> app. And this is uh, for, okay, for example, this is linked to uh, a website which shows some images uh, of puppies. And um, he uses these images to, uh, to show you that you can select um in this case uh, a breed and have uh, the image appearing but it's not appearing <laughs> uh, okay. yeah i also run the app and i didn't see the images as well i thought it was an error from my machine 
No, I, I, it worked to me the, before. I saw it. Well, um, let's do it again. Well, anyway, um, while it's loading, let's see the code. So here, uh, in this case, well, the, the app is this. So you have a, a drop down menu, you choose some, in this case, some breeds, and then the image of the breed appear on the right side of the app. Okay. So to make this uh, image appearing, uh, you need to, um, okay, let's uh, just say that in the UI, you select the input, your select input. It's a scroll down menu. So you have choices and you set which choices are you, you, you selecting. Uh, and and this uh, uh, goes to the the triple. Okay, so imagine that you have some data uh, and you have a scroll down menu uh, with set names. Then the HTML output uh, it's the source, and the image output is the photo. Okay. So these two elements are here, the photo and the source. So I have an output photo because I have an image output photo. And I have an output source because I have an HTML output source. So there is a source here and an output source, a photo here and an output photo in the server so the photo is as a render table render plot here we have a render image and the render image we have uh, so we are running out of time you can see with the question mark what what are the options uh, available for you to use in this case, we specify in the list the source of the photo, of the image, the type, if it's a JPEG, a PNG, uh, and then the, the dimension. Here, uh, it's important to mention that uh, the delete file needs to be false, otherwise it deletes all the images. And there has been the book mentioned, the chapter mentioned that have been that there has been a there been a modification to this function. So now it's automatically not deleting by default. And then so this is the source, because in this case it went to a specified source. So you have the original things uh, mention it with a glue function what about the source of the images more you can find it here render images in shiny apps for example um i uh, fi uh, so finally added some other uh, resources such as the cheat sheet and these things this it's all for me i don't know if you have any questions i had a curiosity about this particular triple in your browser does it automatically uh, download all three of these images, or if you had multiple, uh, any sort of app that you're developing, this image library, does it get stored in temp in your browser? And so you're just calling on it, and then the, the browser renders it? 
um, or is it the server that's sending this data to you as you as you change it? I have reason to believe it's the second. I think when you when you change your different drop down menu, uh -huh. it's calling on the server and then sending that new image to your to your placeholder this this object uh, on your browser where it's populating the image. Right. Good question. I'm not sure about that. I'm sure it's something like related with temp file and calling from the server, both of them, because yeah. you need to store it some, store them some, some, wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Hope> that that. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much, Federica. That was a really awesome discussion. I have truly understood a lot as compared to how we started. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I will be the one taking us through the next chapter. I, I believe so. Yes. Not I believe so. I know so. <laughs> yeah. I will see you next week. And if you have anything else, we can continue our discussion on the Slack channel. Okay. Bye. Enjoy your day, morning, and evening, <laughs> wherever you are. Yeah.